how we started late. I forgot we started late. You had me waiting the whole time. I'm on the toilet now, but hey, I'm gonna talk to you after. Hey, broke the chains of the slave trade, run through the forest like a damn nation. Anything better than that damn cave, we gonna get them back to Pearl Harbor way. The government gave me food stamps and at the same time took my heart away. So I drive the paint like hard away. God couldn't test me a hard away. I'm a soldier like my fucking daddy. I try hard to be fucking happy. Welcome to the next episode of Bottom of the Bay. I can't front. Today's guest is on the icon path. He does toy drives, car giveaways, comedy skits, sharing his resources with regular everyday people. A true example of doing what you say and saying what you do. C Legal, welcome, bro. Bless, man. Bless. Shout out to Impact, man. Thank you for having me on, man. We on the you know bottom of the base show. I'm excited. I'm here in San Jose. Shout out to San Jose. Four ways. Love. Yes, sir. Take us back, man. Where you from and what high school did you go to? I usually don't tell people this on camera, but I'm from San Francisco, California. You know what I'm saying? Born and raised in San Francisco, California. I went to a few high schools because due to gentrification, we got put out of San Francisco, California, and I moved to Antioch. So I graduated from Antioch High School. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Philip Burton High School. Though. Shout out to Antioch High School. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I'm, I'm born and raised in San Francisco, California by way of Antioch, California. Shout out to gentrification. That's right. You ain't gonna shout out them Frisco schools? Oh, yeah, I did. Philip Burton. That's, a, that's oh, in the okay, city, okay. you know what I'm saying? Went to Glen Park Elementary, James Demon Middle School, you know, Philip Burton High School, then I came to Antioch. That's what's up. Any siblings? Yeah, I got two sisters uh, on my pop side, and I got a sister and a brother on my mama's side. Yeah, I got a few siblings. I'm the middle child on both sides, so I'm a weirdo. You know what I'm saying? I'm definitely a middle child around this mug, so I'm definitely a weirdo, you know? I'm the, uh, what they say, I'm the black sheep, because, you know, I'm the goat around this mug. Or two though, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what's up. That's what's up. So did you transition into being the world's greatest square or did you grow up with that mentality? Man, that's a great question. That is a good question. Uh you know when you when you younger, especially when you transition in from you know an urban environment to a more suburban environment, you go through this transitional phase where you finding yourself. So when I was like a like freshman in high school and you around all these new kids, you like, hey, I'm, from, I'm from the hood. What's up? You square. Cause you think that's how you gotta be. Right. So in, in that time when I was trying to be tough, I tried to sell weed and I sold guns and I did all type of stupid shit. Then I recognized this ain't me. You know what I'm saying? I recognized early in life, this ain't who I am. This is not who I wanna be. So I just had to, and I started calling myself the world's greatest square early on because I wanted to make it cool to be a square. Like I can have everything I want in life, be dope, be fly, you know, have money, have women. I can have anything I want and be a square and be at peace and make shit look good. So that's why I go so hard on calling myself a square because it's important to know you don't have to be tough. Too many of our youth think you gotta be tough, think you gotta be something you're not in order to be accepted, in order to be loved, in order to be, you know, respected and you don't. So I, I made it a point to call myself the world's greatest square because I went through a time in my life where it was like, I didn't know what I was. Did I want to be a street or did I want to be a square? So lucky I learned early on, I'm not, I ain't with no street shit, I'm a square. That's right. All right, man, so you help a lot of people out, but who are some folks you go to for guidance? God, you know what I'm saying? I'd be heavy okay. in prayer. I'd be heavy in prayer. Uh, my mama, you know what I'm saying? When I need to talk to somebody, I shout got out a couple to mama of friends. Love. Uh, I got a couple friends I call too. Uh, shout out to, shout out to O, shout out to Rim. You know what I'm saying? I got a couple friends I call, um, but really God, you know what I'm saying? I was in therapy for a minute. You know, I really, I really, I really appreciate therapy, so. Therapy is one another thing I'm about to get back into actually. So yeah, therapy, my mama, a couple of my friends, but yeah, that's who I go to. Okay. As far as asking for help, like can I help some money or do something for me? That's out. You're not gonna catch. I'm not one of them because I got pride, I got ego, I'm arrogant. I'm not asking nobody for too much or nothing. That is all the way out. Whatever I need, whatever I want, I'm either gonna hustle, work for it, or I'm just not gonna have it. But asking somebody for something, do something for me. Yeah, that's, that's out. That's not even in my spirit. I'm glad you said that. What if it's the other way around, though? What if somebody's offering to help you? Do you accept it with that same type of diligence as you just had, or I'm not, do you turn it away? I'm not even too good with accepting compliments, so I'm not taking no money from nobody. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I ain't really taking too much money or... Yeah, uh, -uh. I, I, it's something I'm working on. I'm, I'm, I'm acknowledging it's a flaw, but I'm not accepting too much or nothing for nobody. If I ask somebody for something, it's really, really probably for charity to give to somebody else, but nothing straight to my pockets ever. I don't, 
I don't know how to do that shit. I'm working on it though, because I'm I need help. If I want to grow and evolve, you know, reach my full potential, I'm gonna need a lot of help because I'm, I'm a great. So I'm gonna need a lot of great help. That's what's up. Educate me. Give us a little bit about the brand and the message behind it. Uh, I got that. I didn't. Yeah, I got it from a book called Ego is the Enemy by Ryan Holiday, one of my favorite books that really kind of changed my life. He didn't necessarily say educate me, but one of the chapters in there is to keep your ego in check is always remain a student, always being a teachable position, meaning teach me something. I'm always trying to learn. So that's where I got that educate me from. You know what I'm saying? Like teach me like I'm always looking to learn something. So I just kind of came with it and uh, it just, and just stuck with it. OK, so. Would you consider yourself a comedian? Hell no, nah, I'm not even funny. You know what I'm saying? Nah, you're not. <laughs> see, you lying like <laughs> now. Because I'd be scrolling and uh, I'd stay giggling yeah. at that silly shit you be saying. Nah, that. I'm just, I'm just ignorant. You know, I'm just, uh, I'm silly. I'm goofy. I wouldn't say a comedian, but I am pretty goofy. I, I gotta laugh. You know, it's my medicine. It's my medicine. You know, I gotta laugh. I, I feel like you can pull it off, man. You got a certain like comedic pocket. And I keep it real. One time, because I, I seen my partners doing some like open mic stand up, I was like, I probably can do that. I want to try it, but hell no, nah, I'm standing in my lane. <laughs> I ain't really doing no comedy. Uh, I just, I'm just jiggy how I get jiggy. You know, I ain't really doing no comedy. Shout out to Boo Boo. Shout out to Philly B. Shout out to Lewis Belt. Shout out to Hannibal Thompson. And this is all my partners. They do their thing with the comedy. So I'm going to let them do that. And I'm going to just stay in my lane. That's right. Shout out to them fellas, man. So your social media is popping. What's some advice you would give to up and comers like yourself? Um, now with social media, obviously everybody going to tell you stay consistent and always be posting and like that. But what I'm learning now is just stay true to yourself. When you're creating content, create content that's reflective of your life so it don't really feel like work. People, you know, are online all day, so just uh, essentially let them live through you. Show what you're doing, show what you're eating, show where you're going. Simplify it. Simplicity is, is what I would say. Don't don't overthink it. Just show your life. Some people going to like it, some people not. But over time, if you, you know, keep doing you, somebody's going to like you. So I would just say sim simplify it and just let it reflect who you are so you're not always trying to chase something. You're not always chasing likes, chasing views. This is just me, you know what I'm saying? That, that, that your best campaign is yourself. So just be you. Yeah, I hear that out there. Y'all yeah, better soak that up. It's real gay. So Thizzler, how'd you hook up with them? Cause it's been like five or six years now. No, it ain't been that long, but it's oh, been six years for sure. Been like, been that long. what, 2019? I know you was on yeah, there yeah, for yeah, sure. It's 2000, yeah, like 23 right now. Damn, is it? That's <laughs> five years, bro. Almost oh, damn, because it was before the pandemic when I first linked up with him. Damn, that's crazy. I didn't even know that. Um, damn, it's been that long. That's crazy. Man. That is crazy. I didn't <laughs> even know that. Uh, but you're the big dog, so yeah, they say that. Um, I was doing my own thing first, and I, I always, every time I, I do an interview, I want to encourage everybody have your own motion. So I was doing my own shows on my own platform. I built my own first. And then like, you know, once people see you doing your own thing, I brought value over to this. They're doing the same thing. You know, it was some things in between that happened because they didn't just immediately give me a show because with Thizzler, I wanted to do like a hood to hood kind of thing. So I came in with Thizzler and I pitched a show like, look, Thizzler. And this was probably 2019. I'm like, look, I want to go for different neighborhoods because I, I'm I'm pretty tapped in with a lot of people. I would say that I ain't no hood, but you know, I know people. So I'm like, look, we can go to different neighborhoods, showcase different neighborhoods, showcase talent in different neighborhoods and, and do that. But they didn't have the budget. So they was like, look, see, we come in here, come help us edit videos, come learn the system and then we can work on something. So I went in there and was editing and I was miserable and I was doing all type of little shit. I didn't know what I was doing. And then eventually they like, look, how about you try this thing that you do on your show on the live on our platform. So we used to, we started off doing top talk shows on Fizzlers, having conversations that popped off. Then that transitioned into showcases, you know what I'm saying? And the showcases went up. And since then we just been providing a platform for these artists. Like one of the artists who came up through the Instagram live just opened up for YG, you know what I'm saying? Opened yeah. up at the Oracle Arena. Shout out to Cito. Okay. He did that, you know what I'm saying? And that all started from Instagram Live. He'll tell you out his own mouth. It started from Instagram Live. So, uh, yeah, that was that. It's a blessing to be able to serve these artists. But that's how. That's kind of how that happened. Shout out to Matt. Shout out to Tyree. Shout out to Billy. That's wild, because you answered my next question, bro, like in the perfect fashion, because I was about to ask you if those show ideas was yours or did y'all collab, but you just answered that in the that, that, way. It was mine. I, that was my baby. I ain't going to lie. This it's you? That. Yeah, that was, it was mine. It seemed like it. It's real organic. Yeah, it's, it's, you know what I'm saying? Crazy. You directly with the people. You be telling them 
that they probably don't want to hear. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, things are supportive of it though. So, but yeah, you know, and they and they helped me make little tweaks to it. That's something I had to learn, like. Because when you're just arrogant and egotistical and you're used to doing things your way, I had to learn how to be a better team player. So they mm -hmm. had certain ideas to amplify the show and make the show better. But I was like, hell nah, we're doing it this way. So eventually when I started listening, it made the show better. It made the show expand. We touch more people, change more lives. So make sure, you know, just because you create something, it's always good to still hear other opinions and, you know, let other people have a say so and actually apply them, not just hear them, but apply them because what they say and may be of service to what you see because people see things you don't see because you don't see everything. That's what's up, man. So have you seen anybody get looks after being on your show? Hell yeah, especially the producers. Uh, producers literally, probably every show a producer get on there and play a beat, they immediately sell that beat. So that's a quick three, four, five hundred dollars, whatever that producer's charging. Um, people get free features, you know what I'm saying, from artists, if the artists think they dope, you know what I'm saying, shout out to Simba, he even gave away a free feature, and the d -Lo's and all these different artists is giving people features. So people get looks all the time, you know what I'm saying, from managers, shout out to Stretch, shout out to Russ, who always looking for new artists to manage and help put them in position. So yeah, people get looks all the time. Like I would be lying if I said no. And you know, that's how people get on the cypher. A lot of people got on the cypher. That's how Cito got on the cypher through the show. He got on the, he got on the cypher um, through the show. Cypher went viral. He's, a, he's on tour now with YG across the country. That's what's up, man. And that happened for a couple people. There's all kind of looks. So absolutely, yeah, for sure. When you never with uh. EBK Young Jonathan took off like from the beginning or was they already on there? I think they was there before me. I think uh, or it might have been the same time, but I wasn't really in tune with this that side of business business. I was focused on the show. I didn't give a damn who they were signing. I'm just keep it real. I didn't care nothing else Dizzler had going on. I cared about the Instagram live show, what I had something to do with. I wasn't really focused. But I will say this Dizzler did put me on to the Brizzes, to the Slobies, to the Jocks, to the J Bow. Dizzler for sure put me on to them. You know what I'm saying? That's that's for show, for show. J Bo actually was on the show before he got popping free J Bo. Give me the story on the scissors. Where that come from? Man, I get that <laughs> question a lot, but it's I'm just fidgety. You know what I'm saying? When you <laughs> I lie, tell people that all the time about me. <laughs> when you live, when you're doing the live show, it's like your brain is moving a mile a minute, so you kind of just need something to center you. And I just had some scissors there one day, and I was just fidgety with it. You know what I'm saying? And it just took off, and I just kept going with it. I can't even explain this, system, but now it's like my superpower. It's like my, it's like my weapon. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, uh, Captain America got his little shield. The scissors is my shield. You know what I'm saying? So, the scissors is like my tool now, my weapon. That works, man. All right, so, so the one thing that I hear a lot, and I'm sure you hear. And it's about Thizzler and overcharging and showing favoritism to bigger artists and being called culture vultures. Vultures, you directly tapped in. So how do you feel about that stigma? I think anytime you have a platform, you gonna get criticism. Everybody not gonna like how you run your operation. People gonna have different views, thoughts, and opinions. But I encourage everybody, like, cause. Thizzler's not the only platform that get this. Most platforms, when you build your own, get that. So I want to encourage people, like, before you criticize, go build your own. Because what I've learned is when you get inside and you see how things work and you see that things cost money and you have to pay people, you understand why things cost. So many people don't understand. It's easy to criticize and be a couch coach when you are not inside and see how things work. You know what I'm saying? So if you have, a, instead of complaining as men, you got to figure out a solution. And that's one thing I don't like about this industry. We have to start operating like grown ass adults. And as a grown ass adult, you have to be a problem solver and not continue to complain about how everybody else running their operation. You run your operation a certain way and you're going to see the responsibility that come with that. You're going to see the cost. You're going to see the entitlement. You're going to see the hate. You're going to see the ups, the downs, the turnarounds. You're going to see everything that come with it. And then it's going to change your perspective because it changed mine. Mm -hmm. When you get inside and see it come with, it's like, oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. You know what I'm saying? Like, people don't know how the cost of things. So I get it. Um, yeah, certain people may have criticisms and may be valid, but at the same time, go build your own. Because co continuing to complain about what somebody else is doing is not what grown ass adults do. Figure it out. All right, all right. So for somebody like me who wants to get into helping the community, what are the first steps I should take? Uh, one of the things I would say is just do it. Um, 
I didn't start off with a whole bunch of money. I did one of my first events. I was broke as hell. I was at, I was at a low point. And that's when I did one of my first events where I helped a, a young lady who had lupus. And I helped a young man that got shot. And we threw a whole event for him. And you know what I'm saying? We raised money and we gave him the money and we, and we helped out. But essentially, you got to just do it. And it has to be in you because it's not a glorious thing. Um, unfortunately, you don't really get no credit for being honorable. You don't really get no pats on the back for helping your people. You know what I'm saying? Um, that gets overlooked. So if, you, if your heart not in it and it's not something you're passionate about, I would say leave it alone because it's a thankless job. So I would just say start, you know, uh, wherever you got. If you got, you know, a 50 cents to give or if you, if you have an idea you want to approach, get with a couple of your people and just go do it. Another piece of advice I would have, which is unpopular, is just you uh, unfortunately you may have to document this because uh people always say you know you shouldn't record your good deed you should just do it right but when you are dealing with people's money and you're doing crowdfunding and you have a grassroots organization in order to get donations you have to show people the work you are doing you need to do this for your current donors and you need to do, do this for future donors if you want to get future donors, people who know you but don't trust you yet, you have to show, look, this is what I consistently do. And if you helped, I can do more. Right. So I would say start where you at, do something, document it to show people, look, this is what I'm trying to build. This ain't no clout move. This is what's on my heart and get it done. I can keep going on and on about philanthropy. That's like my fact. That's like my passion. That's like what matters most to me in the world. So, and I can tell because you yeah. keep doing it. Because, like you said, if it's thankless and you still doing it, bro, yeah, they have to be a passion. Bro, like, unfortunately, in our in, in our community, we don't really salute the honorable people that you know do that. We kind of like to glorify certain other things. This is what I say, but. Yeah, so it got to really be in you. Don't get in here thinking you're going to get some Nobel Peace Prize or a pat on the back. Mm -hmm. and Nah, it don't, it don't work like that. Yeah, I'm right. All right, man. So what's a hidden talent or a skill that people wouldn't expect from you? Shit, I've been in the gym lately. I can, you know, I can do a, 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 some leg lifts. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I could definitely do some leg lifts now. You know, I can hold the bar and lift my legs all the way up. I didn't even know I could do that. You know what I'm saying? I can't actually wait to get to the gym to do it tonight. But you know, yeah, I can do a leg lift. You know what I'm saying? I've been in the gym, man. That feels good. Look at sure I can look at you and tell you in your gym. You high. know what I'm saying? That's what yeah, look at it. <laughs> <laughs> in the gym. That's you right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I didn't know I could do that. So, yeah, that's a, that's a hidden talent for sure. Yeah, I get yeah. jiggy in the gym. Make sure you go do that. So, that about wraps up this interview up with Bottom of the Bay. You want to give everybody your social so they don't know where to find uh, you Make at? sure you follow at the C. Lee Brand on social media, at the C. Lee Brand on TikTok. Uh, I don't be on Twitter like that. Um, yeah, just DM me. Let's talk. Let's have a conversation. Let's build. Let's grow. Uh, let's pray. God is good. That's right. I thank you for coming on the show again, man. Absolutely. A lot of little kids follow you and stuff too, man. So like, we appreciate you. We need people like you out here. But in the meantime, be smooth, bro. Let's talk about it. Peace. Yeah.